All right, everyone, welcome back to Game Over Cancer, raising money for the Canadian Cancer Society. Up now, we have Crazy Ape Boy running Panzer Paladin, and you can feel free to take it away and give us a countdown as soon as you're ready. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Hope everybody's doing fine. So, yeah, we're just gonna go. Uh, the timer starts when we select story mode normal difficulty. <coughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna give you guys the countdown and we're gonna start in 3, 2, 1, go! Alright, so, yeah, this is uh, Panzer Paladin. I'm just gonna say it the German way. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if anybody knows this game. Um, it's pretty interesting, beautiful art style. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to tell you, so I'm just going to try to explain what's going on here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. <laughs> I'm going to try to have an eye on the chat, but uh, the later we get into the game, the more is going on. So if I miss something, sorry for that. So the main movement is that back backdash that we do. Uh, we're actually a little android controlling a mech, so that's what you're seeing right here. So, the game, the stages have basically two parts, one where you play as the mech, and then there's usually one small part where you play as the android. So, um, the health bar you see, the big one is from the mech, the small one is from the android. Uh, you carry four weapons. So what I'm doing here is throwing them out because here the boss of the stage would do a little weird attack that would uh, throw all my weapons away. So to keep them, I'm just gonna—I just threw them at him. Um, so yeah, you can carry four weapons uh, at a time. The rest goes into your inventory. Um, the game has a mechanic called burden. Each weapon has a certain amount of burden. It's like weight, basically, for an RPG. But uh, you don't actually get slower. Um, I'm gonna talk about this more in a minute. He's the boss of the stage now. Let's see. He's the Wendigo. But he's dead now because of this Proto Man fan. Uh, yeah, he has this little whistle before he comes, so that's why I'm calling the horseman the proto-horse. So, he's pretty easy to defeat, just throw weapons at him, and I'm gonna get rid of the weapons that are too much. Um, yeah, and that's because of that burden system that I just mentioned, so... Uh, you can have, there's three stages of burden, low, normal, and high. And um, in each stage, you will there's like in the middle of the of the stage, there's this boss room. Let's call it that. So uh, the horse guy is waiting there, basically. The proto horse is waiting there. Uh, if your burden is low, he will come in and uh, throw you a weapon because he's kind of a neutral guy. <laughs> And uh, if it's normal, nothing happens. If it's high, he will fight you. So you'll never want him to fight you. And right here, I got two drops, the drops that I need. Um, okay, so each weapon has an ability. You see it on the top right. So this one has beam. It's gonna be important later for the boss fights. The other ones that we will use a lot is this one here, durability up and attack up. And um, we will soon see the wings. So back to the burden stuff that I talked about. I'm all over the place. I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> um, so this game has a mode where you can create your own weapons. And I designed a weapon for this marathon. Usually my signature weapon is the stupid stick, which is just a straight line. Uh, but for Game Over Cancer, I got something special and we're gonna see it now. Because here is the boss room. And since we are low on burden, the horse guy, Proto Horse, appears. That's what we want. 
because he's gonna give us our game over cancel weapon which you might recognize as the logo uh, so yeah we have the uh, blacksmith mode where you can make weapons so you can give out certain stats to weapon so the weapon I made is in this case the game over cancel logo it has high attack high speed and the wings and we're gonna use that for certain parts of the stages and for the boss fights so you can skip this Android part but you have to damage boost through the spikes as the mech and since this is a marathon I'm gonna be a little careful uh, one thing about this game is there are checkpoints but they don't activate automatically you have to uh, basically sacrifice a weapon to activate the checkpoint so if I were to die now it would be back at the beginning of the stage so that's why I have uh, I have put in kind of a high estimate because when stuff goes south it goes south a lot so yeah I'm I'm going to use some checkpoints at the later stages uh, in the early stages we should be fine so let's see I don't want to jinx it let's just hope for the best So yeah, here we're gonna see the first boss. We're gonna use that durability up and the attack up, and our gay OC GOC weapon. And um, we're gonna see it's the speed is really coming in handy. So I'm walking up to him, so he does his fist attack at the back of the screen. And yeah, this thing has really high attack. It's pretty fast. And Skullman should be dead now. Nice. So yeah, that was Japan. Each stage is a country basically and has some kind of mythical creature or demon as a boss. So you have this kind of stage select feels like Mega Man. And you get weapons from the bosses, but it's not actually weaknesses. Uh, it's just important for the routing. So when I started running this, the route was pretty different and <laughs> I rerouted a couple of times. But the strat at the moment basically is doing one boss where I need the the custom weapon to defeat the boss and the next stage is one where I would need to use it. So you see the wings here are almost depleted. On the upper right you see like the health bar let's say of the weapon. So it's basically good for one boss fight and then now I can use it for the wings which in this stage lets me skip the part where I would be the android so that saves a couple seconds and I can also fly over an upcoming water section so yeah that's the main strat of the run getting the weapon I designed and then using it either to fight the boss or to use it use its ability so sometimes you'll see me throw out the weapon and then getting it again, like here. That's basically just to reorder. So now I have the bone here that I will later throw on the boss of this stage. And uh, yeah, and this is the second strat for boss that we have. One is just brute force, punch till dead, and. Um, here we're gonna actually use the axe that I got from the proto horse in the first stage because that is the beam weapon and with that we can stun lock 
most bosses, or, well, some bosses at least. So, let's see. Okay, we're gonna use the beam, we're gonna start by throwing out the bone, and then we're just gonna laser her to death. Good old Medusa. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that's what's going to happen for a lot of bosses. Uh, the strat actually comes... I don't know who in who found this, but uh, I saw it in the old world record for this game, and they only used it on one boss. I don't know <laughs> why no one thought of using it for the other ones. But yeah, if you have a weapon that's fast enough, you can stun lock the enemies. Another thing is, the first enemy of the stage will always give you the same weapon. So here we have a defense up, which I'll gladly use for this stage, because it's kind of damage heavy, or it can be. And we also have a little zip here. <laughs> it's... Well, it's really spectacular, actually. <laughs> and are you ready? Ziptastic, right? Awesome. We have two of those. Uh, there's a third one, but it kind of softlocks you in the stage. So that's sad. I haven't found a way to get out of that yet. Maybe there is a way, I don't know. Take that health. <clears throat> so the weapon I'm holding right now was the weapon I got from the Medusa and it's a full health. That's pretty good and pretty rare. So what I'm gonna do is deplete the durability as far as possible and then just gonna put it into my inventory for later. So, the further you go, the harder it gets to keep that burden low. And uh, I want... I, uh, how many stages do I need? I think five stages of encountering the proto-horse. After that, we're good to collect as much as we want. Well, not really as much as we want, just so we don't get to the high burden. But yeah, we gotta be a little careful of what we collect in these early stages. So the game is kind of long, there's 10 of these regular stages and then 6 uh, not wily stages. <laughs> so what happened right now is the little guy shot at me and that actually gives me a defense down. Which sucks to be honest, so I'm gonna do a little detour here since I don't want to die to the boss of this stage. So usually I would go up here. There's a shortcut that skips the android part, but I wanted to take the health here. But uh, now I'm in trouble actually, I got hit by that skeleton, so usually I would damage boost to the guy that I just defeated, but yeah. Let's play it safe, because <laughs> dying here would mean to go back to the beginning of the stage, and... Uh, well, that's not ideal, isn't it? So. Right, and we have got a $25 donation from Cosmic. Thank you, Cosmic. He says, another game over cancer, another chance to fight cancer. Put this towards Mini for the Great Circus Mystery, who has now pulled back ahead. So we've got Mini with 120 and Mickey with 100 for Great Circus Mystery. And uh, yeah, just get those donations in. Exclamation point D if you're looking for that link. Thanks. Nice. Thanks a lot for that donation. So yeah, that was the dragon fight. <laughs> That's kind of a weird one. We actually got a pretty good pattern from him. Uh, when he has about one third of health left, he will be invincible for a short amount of time. That's why I stopped hitting him. But yeah, he, he was good to us.
so this stage has a pretty big skip. Um, <laughs> there's an elevator section in this uh, that takes, I think, about one and a half. Sorry, <laughs> talking is so hard. Uh, I think the elevator section takes about one and a half minutes and um, you can actually fly through it. So that saves a bunch of time and I kind of discovered it by accident. So the way it works is you just have to fly over the platform. So the elevator will activate once you touch it. So you just basically have to fly in to the room. Or you don't even have to fly in, I think it's enough to activate it uh, in the platform before the elevator. So that's pretty nifty. So you start flying here basically and fly up. So when an enemy hits you here you fall down and as long as you don't fall down to the elevator platform that's fine but yeah made it through so that's about one and a half minutes time saved and it's actually the best thing I ever discovered in a speed game because this stage was so long and so boring and now it's fun <laughs> so Checking for the burden, we're fine. Right, so yeah, this is another stage where you can take quite a lot of damage from these things, so I'm trying to play it a little safe, a little safer than usual. stage is actually the last time I want to encounter the horse, the proto horse. And after that we have all the wings we need for the rest of the game. Well, that's, well at least all the custom weapon wings, let's say it like that. So now that we have all those cards here Everybody should feel reminded about some other games. <laughs> I don't think I've actually talked about the story of the game. Well, I don't think that's the most important part about these games, but it's demons. It's demons with magical weapons, and science has to stop it. <laughs> right, let's see. This guy can be can be a dick. Okay, I. All right, got it. So the weapon is fast enough to kind of stunlock him <laughs> even without the beam. Have a second for a donation? Sure. All right, we got a big donation from LV Creed of one ninety two forty two, which gets us to five thousand dollars for the marathon. Thank you so much for everyone to everyone for donating. And the message here says, just because five thousand dollars is such a nice clean number, you know, the kind of number that makes you want to stare at it a lot in awe and wonder. So let's look upon it in glory as GOC continues to achieve and shattering goals as the event continues. Thank you so much for that donation, LV Creed. And if you want to put that towards Mickey or Minnie, then uh, the other one's going to have a tough hill to climb. 
Uh, so just keep getting those donations in and uh, give it back to you, Crazy Ape Boy. Nice. Thank you so much for that big donation. So, yeah, this is probably the hardest of the not 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 wily stages does that make sense <laughs> hardest of the regular stages so i kind of got lucky i got a defense up which can come in handy here and the first enemy of this stage actually throws you a medium health so that's also fine and yeah just a lot of enemies here, these flowers throwing those lasers and stuff. It's just a lot going on and in this stage there's this zip that gets you soft locked. Uh, you could do it here at the screen transition, of course I'm not going to do it right now. Oh sh... I... Alright. I was about to complain about all the drops that I got, but that one was actually health, so I'm gonna take it. So, yeah, I think I should use this one now. See, oh, I'm on normal burden. It's not good. Let's get rid of some stuff. Oh, okay, we are low. That's what I want. So that's the last time we have to collect the weapon. Now we're fine to collect more stuff, which makes this a lot easier. Yeah, it would sure be something to get this zip working in this stage. It could save a lot of time. Could basically skip that whole underground part from just right now. But right now, there's no way of getting out of that wall. So, this part can be difficult. <laughs> There's so many goblins throwing stuff at you. And they are positioned in a way that could throw you off. So I'm waiting an extra second for them to finish throwing. Our trusty wings to fly over this part. This is not actually. Well, we skipped the android part again here and we just fly over some. some parts of the game that are kinda hard to navigate. Because of all those flowers, it's just. it's just so comfortable to fly over here. It's usually at the end of the stage, I'm really low on health. So I'm actually going to use this checkpoint here, just in case. And, oh, I don't think I have an attack up, but we should be fine. I forgot to use my durability up. Yeah, we got the... Oh well, we got the good pattern, her good attack pattern, but it was the last of her clones. But, fair enough. So the best pattern would be for her to be on the first spot, of course, and do that same attack. She has one weird attack where she spawns these weird little creatures that slime on the floor. <laughs> so that's the worst one. Yeah, she was actually pretty nice, except for the real one being the last one. So the good thing about this stage being right after USA is there's a lot of drops in this stage, so you can fill up that burden. So let's do that. So 
we shouldn't have any more horse proto horse encounters. And it's much easier to have the equipment you want for the fights that you need them. So here is another section coming up where you can use the wings to skip the android part which is always a good thing since it saves you the time to get out of the mech and back into the mech one downside is that you can't use that health refill so yeah here the horse guy would appear we have normal burden so nothing happens it's good Whoa, 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 that was weird. <laughs> Awkward save, but saved. <laughs> the struggle is real, yeah. Once, <laughs> when you do a backdash in the wrong direction, <laughs> it's really hard to recover from it. So there's one thing I haven't talked about yet in this game. Um, and that's the controls. So they are super tight usually, and but there's one scenario where they get kind of weird, and that's those kind of bigger enemies that you sometimes see. Like you have those regular ones and the bigger ones, I think you know what I mean. And um, so once you encounter them, controls get kind of weird. I like to call it the dual mode. Because the game has this kind of parry mechanic that you can use, so whenever you find those enemies, uh, yeah, you enter that dual mode. So um, as long as you're in range of those enemies, uh, pushing back doesn't turn you around, but you actually walk backwards. So what that means is uh, you can't do the backdash since, um, well, you walk backwards, so you would dash into the enemy instead of dashing away from him or through him. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind when playing or running this game. So this is probably the most straightforward stage of them all. Just a huge train. Not a lot happening here. Seems like this would be a good opportunity for me to remind everyone to get your donations in. We've still got the Mickey versus Minnie incentive going for the Great Circus Mysteries starring Mickey and Minnie. And if you're looking for that donation link, just post an exclamation point D in the chat. Right, yeah, everybody get those donations in. And thanks for all the support all the weekend. It has been a blast of an event so far. It's my second time being here. Uh, the last time, I don't know, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember which year it was. 2018 maybe? I had quit speedrunning for a while. Now I'm back and I'm glad to be here again. So, here in this stage is actually the only, let's say, wild beam weapon that you can find in the run. At least the only one that I have discovered. And it's this one. So, uh, <laughs> I got paralyzed here for a second because I needed the right weapon. That's something I don't think I have talked about yet also. Uh, weapons have different typings, you see on the top right. Uh, this one is a sword. Um, we have the... I think this is... Oh, I don't remember what, what they call it. Well, it's a spear, basically. And you have the hammer. Well, I don't actually know what they do, except you can use them for opening certain crates. 
I don't know if they have any advantage over some bosses or something. Uh, but yeah, that's why I had to get the right weapon to open that crate. And that's actually why our custom-made weapon is um, a spear-type weapon. Because I need that to open a certain crate in the first not widely stage to get another beam weapon. Where is our gay... Yeah, why? <laughs> I can't talk today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce the G as a German G, and that sounds weird. So, another one of those bosses. He actually gets to do this once, and then you can stunlock him. So, this used to be one of the hardest fights of the regular bosses, because he has a lot of RNG stuff he can go through, but this way is just fine. So from him we get the Popsicle of Doom, one of the best weapons. Because who doesn't like to beat up his enemies with a Popsicle? Go to Egypt, and this is one of my favorite tracks of the whole game. So in this stage you will see the second zip, which is also the biggest zip. <laughs> sand here which you can just hop over just don't do the back dash into it climb here Well, I mean, there is some really ridiculous weapons out there, <laughs> because uh, because of that weapon editor, you can actually, like, you can say that you only want your personal weapons to spawn, which makes sense for the speedrun, but for a casual playthrough, I would say turn on that option, and here's the zip, nicely done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but if you want to see some ridiculous stuff, just turn on the option to get those random weapons and there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot going on. So, we need this one. And yeah, it's another one of those enemies. My mashing is actually pretty bad, that's why I tend to get really silent when trying to do it. Uh, yeah, this enemy can also be pretty rough. Uh, you see all those uh, handles there <laughs> up on the screen. So he has an attack that throws you out of the mech and throws the mech at the end of the screen. So as the android you basically have to grapple along to get it back. Yeah, the enemies that you can kill with the beam are really easy. And so you have a very limited range of beam weapons that you can use. So I think well, I chose the hardest bosses for me personally to use it on. So this stage is the same. You can actually find two wings in this stage, which will come in handy later. Yeah, so 
this is another pretty damage heavy stage. I'm glad that we can just beam the boss to death. So I don't have to worry about him. This was a huge point of resets before I figured out I could just beam everybody to, do, to their doom. So yeah, using the wings to fly over this part here. <clears throat> we have one of the longer android parts in this stage, but they, they are usually pretty tame, except for one of the not wily stages where things get a little rough. Uh, would you go down? Thank you. But yeah, these are the guys I was talking about before where you go into that dual mode. So it can be rough to not take damage from them. Check the burden. Okay, 1-7. We are on normal. I think at about... Uh, 2100, we are getting into danger territory or high. No, we don't want that. That's the, that's the biggest time loss, except the death that you can get having to fight the horsemen. And maybe bad RNG from the Iron Goat, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> This climb always is kind of awkward. Well, we made it. So, we got through here pretty good. Usually, I tend to get hit by one of those flames. Secret attack up here. Some frogs there. These frogs are actually pretty annoying. Okay, almost at the end of the stage. Now so let's use our trusty beam and our trusty GOC weapon and beam another one to death. Meshing, so fine. <clears throat> okay, so this is the last of the regular stages now, and we're going to Russia. With another pretty cool track, though still I kind of wish for a mod where we have the Tetris, Tetris soundtrack here. So, let's go! This is actually the only boss fight where you see kind of a different st strat than just brute force bludgeoning someone to death or using the beam. See, we use Brute Force and Thunder. Yeah, right, Tetris theme would fit here. There's a lot of insta-death traps in this stage. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but still, some wrong inputs and you're out. So another big skip with the wings. You skip the android part here, <clears throat> and after that comes a pretty. 
pretty big uh, climb with moving platforms and stuff that you can just totally fly over and I don't know how much time that actually saves but it's quite a lot. No drop. I want one drop or I can just take this weapon so I can save up my thunder for the boss fight. Always keep your thunder for the boss. It's good life advice. To get down, thank you. Oops, got hit by that guy. So here we're gonna actually get out of the mech a little sooner than needed so we get oh, the cycle we want from the laser beams so getting out here now we can just jump through here get a good cycle up and our thunder so let's see what kind of RNG she will give us and the jump that's good so now she will split in three and that's when we use the thunder because it will damage each copy of her Then we can just punch her, and she's gone. So that was a pretty decent, decent fight. Uh, she can give you some, some bad patterns. Nothing really hard, but just slow. Right. So now we're gonna enter the not wily stages, and that's when things get really rough. I think the whole game is. It's pretty, like the, the regular stages, nothing too hard, you know, but the difficulty really ramps up in those later stages. So, let's see. So from here on out, I'll try to use more checkpoints. Have to wait for that guy to climb up. There's a set of wings up here. Gonna take that. Gonna damage boost through here. Fall down. So here they introduce those Reaper guys, and they are the worst enemies in the whole game. When they touch you, you get cursed, and the curse basically is poison. So you will lose health a lot and for a long time. And the only thing you can do about it is use a weapon that has Blessing as their ability. Um, but yeah, it's better to not get cursed by those guys. So here we use one of those set of wings because there's a lot of enemies here, a lot of flying platforms. It's just safer and faster to do it this way. So. Uh, time to read a donation? Sure. All right. We've got a dollar thirty-eight from Chaotic Good that says that $5,000 amount looked a little too perfect, you know? I think it's time to move past it. And let's start working towards the next goal. Thank you, Chaotic Good, for your donation. And if you would like to put that towards Mickey or Minnie, we've still got that incentive going. Minnie is currently in the lead by $20. And just a reminder to chat that we do have 21 Steam keys available. Uh, all it takes to get entered into that is $5 or more of a donation. So let's keep them going. Right. Thanks for that donation. And yeah, I agree. 5,000 seemed a little too perfect. 
And yeah, here's that crate I was talking about that I need to open, so that's why it's a spear weapon. Gonna dash through here. Uh, a little too slow, but that's fine. Another one of those Reaper guys, and I hate them. So here I have to wait a sec to summon the Paladin, because if I wouldn't, I would get instantly cursed. And really wouldn't want that to happen. So, coming up, this is probably the hardest boss in the game if you do it without, without the beam strat. Uh, yeah, he is also a paladin, so he also has a shield. You have to get him the right way, but then you can stun lock him, like we did with all the other bosses. But man, let me tell you, if you fail it, because the beam, I don't know, it holds about 30 seconds, I think, so you basically have all the time in the world. But if you fail it, oh man, you don't want to face this guy. It's pretty rough. I. I I haven't found a good way to beat him casually yet, so I just cheese my way through all the time. <laughs> so now we have two bosses coming that are pretty RNG heavy. Uh, the second one even more than the first one. And, uh, yeah, we're in the end game now. Uh, I think five more stages, but it's getting rougher. I want to collect some more weapons in this stage because I'm gonna throw a bunch at the boss of this stage. He said and destroyed the weapon he was carrying. Uh, good job. Oh, well. Nothing to really worry about, just <laughs> stupid stuff. So this jump here is pretty scary since it's one of those guys where you enter the dual mode so uh, I tend to just take a hit from him and then jump so nothing weird happens there we go some drops yeah you take a lot of damage early on here in this stage but at this point we have three full health weapons in our inventory or on us so we are pretty good to go also there is some health coming up just gonna take this So we're actually taking that checkpoint just in case. You never know what happens. So yeah, I think this checkpoint mechanic is pretty interesting. Early on in in the speedruns, I still use a lot of these checkpoints, uh, especially in the last stage. Like, I had a lot of PBs where I still died someone in the final stage and was able to PB because I used some of those checkpoints so they are totally valid to use if you have a weapon to spare go for it Oh yeah, I totally intend to use some some extra checkpoints here and there. Uh, as long as I have, like, as long as I don't have to get rid of my my um, custom-made weapon, I'll use a checkpoint. I 
and there is one to use. Uh, yeah, we just got past the Putrid Paladin. He's the first of the <laughs> Wily bosses. So coming up is the Chimera. And so for this, I'm gonna search for some stuff to throw. Usually I would try to menu a little bit faster, but just to be extra safe, not to throw some something important else out. So, my popsicle, there we go. So yeah, this one is kinda RNG heavy. He just comes from both sides and sometimes does this attack. So you just have to sit this one out. At one point he will come up again. Alright. That was a pretty good pattern. He came up pretty fast. So, he was good to us. Nice. <clears throat> and we did just get another donation of $11 Canadian from Lori with no comments. So thank you very much for that donation. Keep them coming. Thanks a lot for donating. So, I guess this is the hardest stage? I don't know, I can't really decide. Definitely the scariest stage, let's say. Because this is the stage where you have to play as the android a lot. And, um, well, the game doesn't really prepare you for this. Because you're so vulnerable as the android. While playing as a mech you can damage boost through all of this stuff, you know. Uh, but suddenly you're forced to play as the android for so long. It's pretty cool, but it's also nerve-wracking. Because all you have is this little whip and... There's a lot going on here. So this stage cost me a lot of PBs. So there's actually two parts in this stage where you have to play as the android. Ideally I get through the first one without taking damage, so I can damage boost a very specific part of it later on in the second part. But yeah, this stage is and always will be scary. <laughs> At least for me. Especially this part. It's kind of weird to describe how it feels to go through this. But yeah, I played it a little safe and we got through pretty good. And that was the first Android part, very clean. Grab some of this stuff. Oh, we are high on burden, so let me get rid of some of this stuff again. We are still high, uh, what can I use? Well, whatever. Okay, we're back to normal. Get that checkpoint, double check, okay, we are normal. So if I hadn't done that, we would have fought the proto-horse here and that would have cost us, I don't know, at least 30 seconds, probably more. I think alone his whistle takes about 10 seconds. 
Okay, you can jump over those guys, but you know, better safe than sorry and stuff. Same here, you could jump over all of them. But this stage is so nerve wracking. So, okay, one. Okay, I actually played it safer than usual. You can just get damage boosts from those guys. But I'm just a nervous wreck right now. Okay, good thing I didn't do that, because I got hit from that goblin. So, okay. Survived. <laughs> And it feels so good to be back in my mech. Getting hit by everything is also a good strat. Do I have an attack up? I do. Here we go. So this is it. The worst boss. Let's pray for some good RNG. He has he has this wheel which decides his attacks and he's only vulnerable for a few of them. This is one. The only time you'll see me use the burst. Oh shit, that's... that's good, actually. Whoa, we got God RNG going! Damn! He was so good to us! <laughs> that's amazing! <laughs> that's basically the best you could get. <laughs> Forget brain freeze, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was, that may have been the fastest fight ever. <laughs> I lost some time in the stage because I was playing very safe, but holy moly, that was, that was some good RNG. Thanks a lot, Mr. Goat. Uh, where's my wings? There's my wings. So I found an extra set of wings, so I use that for this part here. It's not totally necessary, but that climb can be a little tough, so why not? You know, it's a free pair of wings. Oh, damn. I accidentally broke a full health. Should be fine. I'm still amazed by that Furfur fight. So, as I told you, he's invulnerable while he does his Wheel of Fortune thingy. And um, there's actually one attack where he just does a laser beam attack that goes in circles. And that one takes forever, and if you're unlucky, he does that like two or three times. And yeah, you really don't want that to happen. So there's another beam hidden here. We want that for the next boss. This part is scary, it looks really easy, but those fish can actually push you into your doom pretty fast. I'm just gonna use those defense up. And we are high again. And back to normal, that's fine. So yeah, this stage is really damage heavy. As you can see, rough to navigate through.
Yeah, I, this game is kind of unknown, I think, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I also found it randomly in some top 10 list, I think, and I thought, damn, I need to play this game, and yeah, I'm hooked. And uh, the city behind it is Tribute Games. They are doing that new uh, TMNT beat-em-up game. So that's another thing from them to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, Furfur was really shy this time. Use a defense up for this boss, another attack up. So, this is uh, Sharon, and there is something you can do here. If you stand in the right spot, you can bounce on his head because usually he would throw you off. I just recently found this. It's too bad. If he gives you the right pattern, you can save a lot of time by doing this. But yeah, if you stand in the right spot, you can just bounce off his head with a big enough weapon. Still good enough. <laughs> All right, let's let's make him Karen, keeper of the souls of managers, or something like that. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, actually. All right, we're doing pretty good. Not trying to jinx the run or anything, but two more stages to go. Of course, it's not getting any easier. At least the boss, the bosses are getting easier from now on. So let's go. Okay, <laughs> played it too safe, and that irritated me. So you can skip a huge part of this stage by doing this little damage boost. Well, I actually, I don't remember how much of the stage you skip, because I think I only played through that part of the stage once, but it's it's a good time save. Let's, let's just say it. <laughs> So in this stage you'll see the wings for the last time in this run. Damage boost through that flower. And, uh, if you time it right, that what happened will happen, you don't get damaged by it. I think... is it this stage? In, yeah, I think in this stage is another set of wings, but we don't really need it at this point. Last second burden check, we're good to go. Uh, come on, get out. Where's my wings? There's the wings that I want to use. There we go. So, not really a skip, but we're just flying over a lot of enemies and stuff that could throw you into insta death. I just decided to use those extra set of wings. Yeah, it's it's basically well, it's ew. it's kind of a safe strat, but it also saves time. So win-win. So right now I stupidly fell into spikes and decided to take one of those full healths since I 
was reckless and destroyed one earlier. It only gives me one. Uh, we should be good. No! Oh, f damn it. This jump is ridiculous. Okay, so... Now... Now we have to go to this part again. But we don't have wings anymore. Yeah, jumping off those ladders can be really, really sickening. And as the android, you instantly die. What a good thing I took that checkpoint. get too comfortable with the damage boost. Alright, let's do this. So yeah, it's actually faster to damage boost with those lasers. My beam. Yo, Mr. Brundlefly. All right. Can also be a pretty Pretty hard battle, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing we have that strat, so he is not much of a fight. Oh yeah, really tough fight. So, final stage. Again, a lot going on. So in this stage we have a lot of insta-death on the ground in form of lava. We have a lot of those Reaper guys that curse you and yeah, there's just so much stuff going on. So I'm actually getting rid of the shovel for now because I want that for the final fight and I just don't want to lose it by accident. So normally when you fall into the lava that would be insta-death for the paladin and for the android, but I don't know what it is. Like certain spots, like sometimes I fell into it by accident and nothing happened. So at some spots when you jump fast enough, nothing will happen. I don't know if that's probably something with the programming. I won't complain. Just something to be aware of. Here's a lot of those defense down guys and a lot of just a lot of debuffs. And we're high on burden, so it's some stuff. Okay, back to normal. So for the final boss you actually need about six weapons at least to throw at him and in one run I think I was on a good pace I just didn't have enough stuff to throw at him and run out 
and that killed the run. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Another one of those jumps from the ladders. You can damage boost through those dragon guys, but I'm not taking any chances right now. Surely taking that checkpoint. Let me equip something. Okay, you, you just saw it, right? I've, uh, I've done it twice. I landed in the lava and due to my super fast reflexes, nothing happened. But that was actually <laughs> really scary. Yeah, if you, if you jump fast enough in the right rhythm, nothing will happen. I don't know if this applies to every lava, uh, at least for some it works. So here were two of those reaper guys, you want to get rid of them because they will follow through this whole section and you really don't want to get cursed this late in the game. This part is a little scary but nothing too bad. And here's the room for the boss. I'm just taking this checkpoint. So, alright, final boss time and don't be underwhelmed. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say this in advance. The timing stops not after the final hit but when you leave the room. So after the final hit there's a small cutscene and then um, you can decide uh, the good or the bad ending and then the time stops. So that was the first phase. You can really uh, just do that. <laughs> and uh, here's the final phase. And um, yeah, th this boss is really easy. So the stage is way more, way, way harder than the final boss. Let's go. So you just have to avoid those hammer thingies. Okay, he does this, you get on here, and then just throw all your stuff at him. And we got the one cycle, and that's it! <laughs> that's the final boss, so get ready to stop the timer. We have to wait for some stuff to happen. And uh, Okay, really quick, good or bad ending, decide, chat, decide. <laughs> you have like 40 seconds to decide. <laughs> And thank you all for the GG's. Bad, bad, bad. I see bad ending. All right. <laughs> good. One good. I like four bad. Two good. Four to four. Damn. I can't. I can't count. Good. All right. We're going with the good ending then. And time. <laughs> So 1 hour 13.28 on my timer. I don't know what your timer says. Uh, something like that, I guess. The uh, good or bad ending is basically just if you pick up the weapon or not. Uh, pretty solid run, one death. Uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. This was Panzer Paladin, and thanks for all the donations. Awesome, thanks so much for the run, Crazy Ape Boy. An awesome run of Panzer Paladin. And up next here, we have Shantae and the Pirate's Curse that is going to be run by Jangle Storm. So we are going to take just another quick break while that gets set up. So everybody stick around and we'll be right back. <laughs> 